Our first victim profile is that of Aaron Dennis. To give us the circumstances surrounding Aaron Dennis's murder, we have with us Sergeant Jeff Liu of the East Palo Alto Police Department. On October 20th, 2007, a little before 5.30 p.m., uh, officers were summoned to Xavier Street and Purdue Avenue for the report of multiple shots fired. Upon arrival, they found Mr. Dennis, or Aaron, uh, laying in the street suffering from multiple gunshots. Uh, paramedics were summoned, but were unsuccessful in reviving him. Uh, at this point in the investigation, what we know is that Mr. Dennis, or Aaron, was brought to um, that intersection by the suspect driving a light-colored sports utility vehicle. Um, Aaron had to exit the vehicle, and at that point, um, the suspect shot him multiple times before fleeing in that uh, utility vehicle. We believe we know who the suspect is at this point, but we need your help. We need witnesses who may have seen what happened, seen the suspect fleeing from the area, and in the best case scenario, are able to identify the suspect. Um, We've done a lot of work in this case, and I think we've built a pretty good case. We just need that one extra step, and that requires your help. Thank you, Sergeant. Sure. Well, joining us to talk about Aaron Dennis are Aaron's brothers, um, Cortez Dokes and Lawrence Dokes. Uh, thank you both for being here. You, thank you are. My, my name is Lawrence Dokes. You're Lawrence? Uh -huh. I'm Cortez. And you're Cortez. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you both for being mm -hmm. here. Um, how, how old was Aaron when he was killed? Um, 47. I think he was 47. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did you all find out well, that I, Aaron had been killed? Well, I got a call uh, around 9, 9 o'clock from the East Palo Alto Police Station. They, they got in touch with my sister through his cell phone. And, and that's, how, that's how they got in touch with the family through my sister. And then they called me. And I came down to East Palo Alto to find out what was going on and they need to ask questions and you know, right. know about my brother and what was going on with him, you right. know, so. Cortez, mm -hmm. how did you find out? Uh, my sister called me and uh, I couldn't make it out to Palo Alto during that time, but uh, she had called me and told me about the murder and uh, I called my mother and broke down and, you know, Must just terrible. couldn't take it. Cause basically, he came out here from Atlanta to join mm -hmm. a union with me. He was coming out from Atlanta to me, and that's why I take so much, I take so much, uh, yeah. So you feel responsible yeah, I take, in a way because I, I take responsible out. for it because it, it affected me because that day he had called me, all he asked me was that morning to come pick him up and I didn't. You know. It's got to be so hard, it's hard well, on it you. Is. It's hard on me because, uh, what we always been together as yeah. a close family, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. And yes. Me right. and him, mm -hmm. we build cars, build motorcycles together. And mm -hmm. would, would it be all right with you all? Will it be all right if we look at some photographs yes. of Aaron? Is that, is that okay? So, I understand yeah. we have a few photographs, and maybe when we look at these photographs and they're put up on the, the screen, you could tell us a little bit about what's going on in the photographs. Mm -hmm. So if we could get the photographs up in a moment. There. Now, who's well, that? This picture is uh, after his services. Uh, this was after the funeral? After the funeral, yeah. That's okay. my uh, Cor Cortez, my brother Ernest, my cousin Dylan, and my niece. Got it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Let's see if we have another photo. Now, now who's that? That's in Atlanta. Uh, mm -hmm. My cousin Dale, he, he runs a studio, and he was uh, my brother was with him during that time. And is that your brother behind him? No, that's my brother on the phone. So on your the brother's phone sitting on. in the chair yes. with the hat on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Aaron. That's yeah, Aaron. That's uh -huh. yeah. that's There's Aaron. a close-up. That's, that's yeah. a close-up at the studio. Wow. Yeah. And you said he, he was in a studio? Did he do some work in recording? or No, well, just in there. Uh, just in there helping out. Helping, helping out. out. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now, who's in that photo? My mother, uh, Yvonne Dose, my sister Gladys Dose, Ernest Dose, my and that's brother. Aaron. Aaron was the youngest out of, uh, all out of, of, out of the he's five. The young, uh, he's, he's the baby. The he's yeah. the baby. Mm -hmm. well, you know. Let's see if we have one more photo. There may be another. There we are. That's me, um, me and my right. mother and Aaron. And there's Aaron. And we're just having fun uh, one weekend, just just having a good time with each other. And my brother was so crazy about Harley Davis. Is that right? You know, yeah. Yes. Was he was going to eventually get him one, Is you know, right? if he was still being here, Is you know. Right? So. Right. Yeah. 
I don't know if we have one more photo. There's our last photo. Oh, What's and there's that? a picture of his several, daughter, yeah. daughter uh, his daughter Latanya, Latoya, and his son Aaron, and his grandkids. So Aaron, your brother, mm -hmm. has two children. Mm -hmm. and three many, children. Three children, they and how many a, grandchildren? He got oh, one, two, three, five. Five grandchildren. Five grandchildren. Yeah. So thank you for, for sharing the photographs with mm -hmm. us. Um, so what, what's your fondest memory of Aaron? My fondest yeah. memory is uh, him driving Cadillacs. It's a, you know, it's, that was his favorite thing. You know, he had a Cadillac him and a tattooed on his stomach. You really? That's all he wanted was Cadillacs and Harleys, Harleys. And, and stuff like that. And uh, wow. he was really fond of detailing. He had his own detailing business, you know. Really? Yeah. And, wow. uh, and he was a barber. He was good in the community. Wow. He never fought. I can't even remember a fight he ever had or really? argument. He was good with children, good with people. He was a peaceful man. He was a peaceful man, mm -hmm. very peaceful. Wow. So how, you know, you've told how the, the, the murder of your brother has, you know, deeply affected you all, and yeah. we'll talk a little bit more about it, but how do you feel about the fact that nobody is really coming forward and saying anything? What does that do for you? Well, well I feel saddened about it because I would like for them people to put themselves in my shoes and, and, and understand the pain and suffering that I'm going through, you know, by seeing these mental health doctors and everything, because I have nightmares, and I'll be calling my mother sometime and telling her that I'll be seeing him and me in a car together, and it, it's really affecting me so hard, and, and I just would like to ask the community, you know, if they can just pick up the phone and just, you know, call the tip line and just mm -hmm. give some type of information because it was during the time during daylight hours when people was out and about. So mm -hmm. your sense is that somebody must have seen something. something. Somebody heard had to something, see right? something. And like yeah. of my information I had heard that some person had told one of the officers or someone that the person chased my brother down the street shoot me. So you know they had to see some. they saw something on the street. I know yeah. they seen the the utility uh, green uh, Tarango, uh, they seen the color of the car. I mean, nobody mm. couldn't get the license plate number or mm. nothing, you know, but all the people out in the well, Why do you think people are not coming forward? Uh, people are afraid, you yeah. know, just it's people just are afraid to get involved, you know. People just don't want to get involved. Just don't want to get involved. So what, if you could say something to people right now, maybe somebody who knows some is watching mm -hmm. right, you know, watching this program, what do you say to that person who just doesn't want to get involved but knows something? Please call. Please call because the suffering, I need closure. My mother needs closure. My mother's taking it hard. She, we can't even talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. and, so talk to me about your mom a little mm -hmm. bit now. So Aaron was the youngest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your mother, how, how is she dealing with this now? Hard. What's, what's she, she's in a situation where she don't even want you to even mention this name, name. to her because it's just, she just too can't hard. kiss too hard for her, yeah. you know. So, so you don't talk about? No. Oh, you don't talk to her. We no, can't. No, uh, nothing. Okay. So violence. certainly because finding out who did this is going to help bring closure for yes her, too. Will. Yeah. Is that yes, right? Yes, it will. Yeah. And, and, and Cortez, you, you mentioned about what you're going through yeah. um, in the aftermath of this. So my sense is that you feel some way responsible because he came out here because... Well, he you, came you, out here. He had called me from Atlanta. We normally stayed in contact, and he was saying the pay out there wasn't good enough, so he wanted to join the union to get into the refinery business with me. And he was coming out here for me, and it happened to just uh, stay in Haywood with my sister at the time because I didn't have room for him during that time. But uh, but you, you know, in fact, you are not responsible for your brother's death, I, right? I'm not You're saying, uh, I, I, I really think that I could have avoided it. <laughs> I could I could have avoided if I had to just when he called me that morning picked him up and took him to Elsa Brandy because when I stayed it's quiet it's a wooded area yeah. and uh, it's just so hard you know always it's easy I guess to look yeah. back mm -hmm. and say well I could have done something and yeah. it's just yeah. hard but um, you know who, who's at fault is the person who who did this shot well, your yeah, brother. Who that, done that's, this, that's right. what we're trying to figure out mm -hmm. um, so. What do you think we can do, I mean, to keep your brother from just becoming another statistic, we, you know, to keep him from being forgotten? What, well, first what of all, I'm so happy that you, 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 you know, the police yeah. officer called us and 
and it let us participate in this because mm -hmm. this is a great help for me personally yeah. you know because my uh, I love my brother very dearly I really did mm -hmm. so how mm -hmm. have the police been helpful to you in, well, in, in all of this yes they, to, for me because yeah. you know they've done what they can you know on the little information that they had mm -hmm. and uh, because they didn't have nothing to go on, and, you know, and I'm just thankful that they even getting this far, to, you know, to get us here to, to talk about it, you know, I'm just happy. Mm -hmm. And Cortez, yeah. how, I mean, you feel the police are doing, you know, all they can? Yes, I, I feel they're doing all they can mm -hmm. because, it, just as my brother said, the little information that they're getting, mm -hmm. you know, because the community, they see the officers. <clears throat> With me, myself, I respect mm -hmm. officers. Mm -hmm. And I feel that everybody needs to be special officer because without officers in the community, mm -hmm. it'd be like the wild, wild mm -hmm. west. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because people would be snatching purses, mm -hmm. doing illegal right. things, mm -hmm. and we need the police. Right. And and I feel that everybody that's watching this show and everybody that's in the neighborhood with my brother had got shot at, you know, someone in the community needs to pick up that phone because mm -hmm. they got to, you know, they I, got children, and, mm -hmm. and anything could happen, you know. Right. right. And they would, you know, need the same help that I'm needing. Exactly. Some so, closures. So if you had just one last opportunity now to say mm -hmm. something that somebody watching who knows, has some information, this is your last opportunity. What do you say to that person? Go right ahead. Well, in my situation, I just wish you would please call a tip line because it, it, it's just a devastating thing to have somebody get killed in your family and shot down like an animal in the streets. You know, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard, it's just hard on people. You know, and you, I mean, if you was in the same situation, you would want somebody mm -hmm. to come forward and, and, and dial that number and say, oh, I know who did it. At least I got a partial of the, uh, of the a license plate. Place, Anything right. would help. Right. So, you know, I appreciate it if you do anything. Just please call the tip line if you got any little information. I really would appreciate it. Cortez? Yeah, the same with me, you know. I just wish they would pick up the phone and call the program because I need closure. Because I'm suffering, you know. I'm suffering from not eating, I'm suffering not lifting weights. And, and you know, and me and Aaron was, I think, I ain't gonna say we was the closest out of all the brother, mm -hmm. but we, <laughs> me close. and Aaron was close. Yeah. And uh, it really had, uh, it's really an impact on my life, you know. I don't like to talk about it neither. You know, I'm like my mother. You and know, I know this I, is hard. I know this is hard, hard for you. And you know, I had uh, went to see a, a psychiatrist today mm -hmm. and uh, was showing her the bitch wearing the mm -hmm. me standing over the casket and everything because I need some closure, and I just wish somebody find in their heart to call on. Mm -hmm. Thank call you. Out the, the well, I, I thank mm -hmm. both of you for having mm -hmm. the courage to come forward tonight and to talk about something that's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank you for being here. Okay. Um, and I'd say to those watching, if you know anything about Aaron Dennis's murder, if you saw someone, if you saw a vehicle, recall a license plate number, or just heard somebody talking about this murder, please, please do the right thing and make the call. Dial the murder tip line. It's 888 murder zero. That's one eight 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 M U R D E R zero.